behind this piece. Behind the, uh, behind one of the Manchester Wood... Mount Equinox on that side, and into... News, I was Chief Justice. By Smith, John Dowd and Goshen Advocate. Okay. <laughs> so he died in March. And you're luckily... Hi, welcome to Time Stand. Today we're going to talk about time capsules. This time capsule, in the form of a footlocker, I'm going to show you some really cool stuff that we found in here, but that's going to come a little bit later. First, I want you to come to meet Captain Shirley Morgan, one of our summer residents who lived here his whole life. So here are some of the contents of Captain Morgan's footlocker, and I cannot emphasize how awesome this is. I mean, these pieces had been sitting in the footlocker for years in the back room, and thankfully, I asked a question. Do you happen to have any little things left over from you know, all the years the family spent? And one of the granddaughters said, you know, actually, we have grandfather's footlocker. Is that something you'd be interested in? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> so we end up with his trousers, three uniforms, both his field uniforms, his dress uniforms. We have his maps. We have his dog tags. We have his helmets. We have his sidearm. I mean, usually the sidearms are like the first things to disappear. But we even have his sidearm. Just absolutely incredible. So this is his footlocker. And the footlocker, this is, was your whole life. Everything was in here. He had all of his maps, all of his books. We've taken some of it out because we've been cataloging it. But your whole life would have been in here. This is the original smartphone, I guess you could say. This is truly remarkable. This is a service star flag. And during the war, you would hang this in your window to note if you had somebody serving in the war. And this is incredibly rare. At the bottom of the footlocker, we had, I mentioned his sidearm before, here it is, 1917-45. And I don't know if we can get in on the butt of that, but you can see it's stamped. And usually, as I mentioned, I believe, these are the first things that would disappear. The kids never got to this, obviously, because it would have been dispersed to God knows where, colored. Everybody played army as a kid. Look at this. I don't think the World War I, everybody knows the doughboy caps. And this, unbelievable. He was also, I have a much larger head than he did, but you get the idea. And here, this is his map. All of his maps were kept in here. I guess I would call it his map pouch. <laughs> this is when I would need an expert really to tell me exactly what everything is. We're working on that. Everybody had to have their could cook. You can see he had everything stamped. Shirley Warner Morgan. Everything is stamped with SWM or his entire name. All of his clothes, his map case. Everything had his initials on it because you can imagine when you're over there with several thousand soldiers you want to keep track of what's yours. So in this you would do all your cooking and your eating. And then his dress uniform, all of his extra belts. And this little pouch, his compass. The family of Diana Olcott shared this footlocker of Diana's father, Shirley Warner Morgan, who served as a captain in the 305th ammunition train of the 80th division in France, taking part in the Mihail and Mays Argonne offensives in 1918. Those were considered the biggest American uh, battles during the First World War. Morgan was discharged in, as a major in 1919 and went to Princeton, New Jersey and set up the new school of architecture where he went on to serve as professor and later director. He summered in Manchester for the remainder of his life, building an Adirondack-style cottage on William Street near Burn Burton. 
He was elected president of Aquanic in 1937 and oversaw the rebuilding of the clubhouse, which burned down in October 1938, a feat which saw the clubhouse completed with the primary financial backing of Bartlett Arkell in time for the 25th anniversary of the 1914 National Amateur Championship won by Francis Wilmette and whom was on hand for the celebration. Morgan died in 1979 and was eulogized at the Princeton University Chapel. This is one of his dress uniforms, and I can't, I really, I can't stress enough, please don't throw things away. If you have things that you think we might be interested in, give me a call, shoot me an email, however you'd like to do it. If you see me at the grocery store, stop me and ask me. You just never know what you may have that we can save for future generations because we have, you know, we have this, one of the most incredible examples of a Manchester resident during his service to the country during the First World War. We even have his tent and his boots. Absolutely incredible. Until next time, have a good one.